Welcome to our Football Friday Night Online Preview. This is week number nine. We have reached the end of the regular season. Teams have one last chance to try to improve their seating for the upcoming district tournaments. Our feature game of the week pits the Jefferson City Jays against Kansas City Rockhurst, two of the most storied programs in the state. We'll be live at Adkins Stadium Friday night at 5 and 6 with our Football Friday Night Preview. That leads up to the 39th all-time meeting between the Jays and the Hawklets. Join now in the studio by Tom Leffler, Leffler's link. You can read his fine work at krcgtv.com. Tom, you'll be at Adkins Stadium Friday night. Again, the 39th meeting all-time between the Jays and the Hawklets. You've seen a lot of these games. These are two storied programs, and they've had some good ones over the years. Oh, I've seen more than my share. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, longer than I'd like to admit, but they... <laughs> Still, that was the best high school game I've ever seen in the semifinals in 1989, I believe it was, a four overtime game. Wow. That was the best game I've ever seen, high school game. But they've had so many great games through the years. In the last 10, 12 years have been pretty one-sided. Rock right. versus had their way. But I think Jeff City's got a more than a good chance to to get a little revenge this Friday night. I was going to say 2011, I believe, was the last time mm -hmm. the Jays beat Rockhurst. That was here at Adkins Stadium. And, uh, you know, the Hawklets come in 4-4, four and four, and I know you talked about this last week with yeah. Rod. That's a deceiving record. This is still a very good team. But, again, as you mentioned, the Jays, they look like they've got a shot, a good one to win this game. Yeah, talk about Rockhurst the second. They have four losses, but that mm -hmm. is deceiving. One of those losses to Webb City, who could beat the Jacksonville, Anybody. who could beat the Jacksonville Jaguars for heaven's sake, probably handily too. And their other three losses, those teams have combined one loss, and that one loss was to Webb City, Webb City right. same team from Arkansas. So Rockhurst is is better than the record indicates. Uh, Jeff City, though, I, I really like this team. I said this about a month ago. This could be could be Ted LePage's best team he's had in his tenth year. Uh, offensively, they have a lot of weapons. And defensively, they swarm to the ball. Their special games are maybe the best in the state. Uh, with uh, what they have in the kicking game and the return game, uh, they got a lot of weapons going. The one concern I have about Jeff City is their lack of size on the line. Right. And when they play these bigger teams, that, that's a concern for me. 7-1, and one, the Jays are coming off a big win against Battle, who was undefeated until the Jays got him last mm -hmm. week. Now this, for Rockhurst, second straight game against a team from the capital yep. city. The Hawklets at home last week beat Helias 35-25. That was probably a closer score than maybe a lot of people thought. You know, Helias, uh, two or three times it looked like Rockhurst was going to pull away. And when you're 2-5 and five and playing at Rockhurst, which is not an easy place to play, it would have been easy to say, uh, we'll try again next week. Right. But, you know, Helias showed a lot of moxie. That showed me they have some character. Uh, they hung in there. They ended up losing by 10. But And, you know, moral victories are pretty hollow. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think they should take a lot from that game that they hung with a pretty good team on the road. Two and six, Helias. The record's not pretty, but mm -hmm. you look at some of those losses again. They put up a good battle at Rockhurst last week. Battle on the road, lost that game by one point, lost to St. James Academy the following week by four points. So this team's not that far off from, you know, being a 500 club. Boy, and doesn't four and four sound a lot better than it two does, and six? You know, they were literally one play away in both of those games. Uh, they lost on the final play to battle, a game that they kind of mismanaged down the stretch. Uh, and St. James Academy scored with about two minutes left. That was a game that Helias probably should have won, too. Uh, you know, Helias fans need to be patient. I know it's right. tough. They've had so much success, but Tim Rillo is a good man trying to do the right thing. He might be ruffling a few feathers, but stick with him. Uh, I think they'll get a win this Friday night on the road at Sullivan. That looks like a win for Helias. That would put them at 3-6, and six, and that would be enough in their district. They would very likely get to host a game right yep. now. They are the number four seed. It looks like they're not going to really move up or down regardless of what they do at Sullivan. And by the way, Sullivan's 5-3, and three, but their right. schedule's been very weak. Mm -hmm. uh, so I look for Helias to win that football game. Uh, yeah, they're going to be they're, they're going to stay at the number four slot. Look like they'll probably host Liberty Wentzville. I think they'll beat them, but then the reward the next week is a <laughs> return trip to Hannibal. Back to Northeast Missouri. You betcha. And we know how good Hannibal is yes, very this good. year. Only a handful of teams, of course. We're into week nine, still undefeated on the season. One of those right here in mid-Missouri, the Blair Oaks Falcons. Terry Walker's done a fantastic job, 8-0 in his first season. Doesn't look like a terribly tough game on the road at for sales. A chance to finish the regular season 
without any losses. Yeah, Versailles has won three games this year, and after winning, what, one combined game? The, the last previous, two years previous. Th yeah, right. one combined game. So they've gotten better, but they're not in the class with Blair Oaks. And this is the interesting. It'll be the start of a home-and-home home next week. Right. Blair Oaks is basically wrapped up the number one seed in their district. Versailles is basically wrapped up the number eight <laughs> seed. So this will be the first of a – Let's play two. Sure. Uh, they'll play again next week. I think Blair Oaks, both teams, is, uh, uh, just don't want to get anybody hurt this week. Sure. Uh, and then, of course, Blair Oaks would host that game next week, probably the first of their three home games in the district, which looks like it's going to come down to Blair Oaks and Fulton. And that'll be a good one again. Yep. You know, with the back-to-back -back games, too, I mean, when you go into this week, do you do much different? Do you change anything? Because, you know, you're seeing the same team twice in a row. I think Versailles more so than Blair Oaks because Blair Oaks has a mountain man. Versailles has to do a lot more trickeration than Blair Oaks. Blair right. Oaks can just line up and do what they do. Versailles is going to have to pull everything they got out of the bag and maybe borrow some stuff out of somebody else's bag <laughs> sure. to uh, have a chance this Friday and next Friday. The Battle Spartans at home Friday night in Columbia. You talk about a heck of an ending to a regular season schedule. Came to Jeff City last week. Of course, the Jays beat them by 30. Now they finish up the regular season at home against Hannibal, a team we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Pirates are 8-0, and oh, having a great season, Battle 7-1. and one. This could be one of the better games in Mid-Missouri this week. Oh, I think of Jeff City Rockers in this game. Mm -hmm. These are the two best games, clearly. Uh, Battle got knocked back on their heels last week. Yes, uh, they did. Jeff City provided the bookends to Battle's 14-game winning streak. Jeff City beat them last year. They won 14 straight, inclu including, of course, the Class 5 state championship. championship. Game, right. Started out 7-0, and and it's not really a surprise that Jeff City beat them last week, but they beat them badly. I mean, right. they had their way. That game was – they had Jeff City was in control from start to finish. And Battle, I don't know if they'll be questioning themselves a little bit. Uh, going against Hannibal because Hannibal's, like you said, is very good, and I think Hannibal will probably beat him again this Friday. So Battle will will have its confidence shaken a little bit, I think, starting in district play. But then I think they're going to be fine. I think they'll be pretty good. They've uh -huh. got a good draw in that district, of course. The run to the Dome last year started on the road with a victory at Hannibal. They didn't lose after that. A lot of other big games in mid-Missouri this week. Some great teams, including the Mexico Bulldogs. They've had a great year, 7-1, and one, a chance to finish with an eighth victory. They will go on the road to Moberly. Another 7-1 and one team, the Centralia Panthers, their only loss of the season to the Mexico Bulldogs. Earl Bennett's club will finish up with a home game against Macon. The Fulton Hornets going for win number seven. They will host Kirksville. The California Pintos close the regular season at home. A very winnable game, it looks like, against Warsaw. California's played well after an 0-2 start. They've won five of their last six. A good chance to make it six of seven against Warsaw. Good Tri-County Conference matchup in Eldon. The Mustangs will host Southern Boone. South Callaway, a home game against Bowling Green. And the Hickman Cupies still looking for that first win of the year. They will try to get it against a very good Hazelwood Central team. That game in Columbia on Friday night. We will have a busy Friday night for you. As always, join us at 1015. We'll have all the highlights and scores from around mid-Missouri week nine, the final week of the high school football regular season.